Jeff Hodson. I'm a partner and landscape architect with Wagner Hodson. I'm Hannah Luke, landscape architect with Wagner Hodson. I'm Stina Booth, and I'm on the Parks Commission. Angie Sturm, I'm on the Elmwood Parks Commission. Lance Canvas, downtown board. Alex Lenning, St. Albans Museum. Alec, the Parks Commission. Amy Curtis, Planning Commission. <coughs> Don Hammond's local store owner and resident. Michelle Lockhart, intern at Wagner Hudson. Uh, Kelly Wakefield, Master Gardeners and St. Albans Garden Club. Board Ham, represent the veterans. Jeff Young, I'm on the Parks Commission head of the Downtown Board. Chip Sawyer with the city. Um, unless there are any additions or deletions to the agenda, I guess we'll get straight to the presentation. And I'm hearing none, so right. Jeff, take it away. Great. All right, thanks, Chip. We're uh, excited to be back here and to be presenting some initial ideas and concepts for Taylor Park. Um, we're going to run through uh, three different plans, but I want to make sure that everyone understands that uh, the plans are not kind of to be considered in their totality, that you know, each plan represents a group of different ideas, and we can mix and match and borrow from different plans if you see things you like in one plan and not in the others. So um, the really the kind of main uh, reason for presenting these, these three plans is to get the discussion going about actual physical improvements for Taylor Park. So I started with um, what I like to do is, is render the existing park in the same uh, style as the proposed changes just so that people can reference back to it and, and you know, sometimes graphics have a way of kind of um, uh, suggesting one thing or another so I wanted to make sure we had this as a reference point and there's a few things I'd like to kind of point out again that we went through earlier about when we were kind of taking a look at the site analysis of the park. Um, there, uh, most of the paths in the center of the park are asphalt right now. And as we go through these schemes, you'll see some different materials proposed. And what we like to do is, is uh, have a hierarchy of materials where it might be a concrete main walk, some special paving at intersections or nodes in the park. And uh, we usually save asphalt for kind of the tertiary walks through the park or kind of the less uh, primary, primary walks. Um, of course, you know, the ladies fountain uh, dominates the north part of the park. You know, we've talked as a group about the south end of the park and the um, center of the park um, as kind of lacking a character uh, to themselves. Right now we have uh, the shrub and perennial planting that kind of separates the park from uh, Church Street. Um, and right now, you know, some of the walks uh, aren't aligned with some of these important civic buildings uh, across the park. So we talked about ways that we can kind of bring those buildings uh, and their wonderful architecture into the park. Um, with that, I think um, I'll have Chip advance it to the, the first concept. Yeah. And, want, oh, yeah. You want to hit the, the button with the light on it? I think the blower is the blower is going the screen back. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through all three concept plans and then go through uh, an image board that we've prepared and then I also have some hand sketches that I put together since we sent out the. <laughs> the advanced information that I think will help to um, kind of portray the design intent of each scheme. So um, we're calling this one Master Plan Concept A. And uh, I'm just going to kind of walk you through it. Um, this one, uh, I would say, uh, looks at kind of three distinct uh, areas of the park, the ladies' fountain area, the center part, which on this scheme we've called Memorial Lawn, and then this southern end, which we're kind of uh, showing as, as its own kind of park within a park, kind of a neighborhood park that would be kind of a destination and a quiet place uh, separated from 
uh, the rest of the park. It's a very large park. Um, and so the concepts are looking at different ways of organizing and having paths and um, giving each part of the park its own character. So uh, a lot of the old uh, photographs of Taylor Park show these majestic elm trees that lined not only the walkways in front of the ladies, but actually went all the way through the center of the park. Um, those you know, have been long gone due to Dutch elm disease, I imagine. Uh, but we're, we're considering um, the scale of those trees. They, did, they, they had a nice presence for the park. So we're, in almost every scheme, we're proposing that um, some larger canopy trees kind of uh, line the main walkway through the park. Right now, there's some apple trees out there. You know, they're much shorter. They tend to um, not allow you to see through the park as well. So what we're showing is, you know, a line on each side of, of trees that would, uh, and they can be elms. There's uh, disease-resistant elm varieties, but they, there's nothing like kind of the V-shape kind of cathedral effect of, of these big shade trees. So we're uh, proposing larger shade trees kind of uh, on each side of that planting bed. Uh, we're also uh, showing the possibility of reintroducing the historic bridge in the center of, of that, what used to be a, a water feature, but we thought you know, it, it could be interesting to bring back the historic bridge uh, just going over the planting bed. The planting bed could be recessed, and I think it could bring back some of the original uh, architecture and intent of the, the north part of the park. Um, and if, if this bridge is reintroduced, we're also thinking some diagonal walks uh, that would kind of lead you to that, that point might make sense. I should say, you know, the mid-block crossing here on Main Street, in this scheme, we've aligned it, and you come up to this um, kind of plaza node here. Um, this, this walkway does not exactly line up with um, the building right here, uh, the courthouse. Uh, but this, if, if we think of this as kind of a plaza area, it can kind of mitigate the two geometries that, that exist. And in this scheme, we're showing this as the location of the interactive play fountain. Um, we talked a lot last time about you know, where in the park the play fountain might be appropriate. Some people felt it shouldn't be near the ladies' fountain that they might kind of compete or the ladies might attract kids from the interactive fountain. So we're going to be showing you schemes with it in different locations. But uh, for this one, uh, we're showing it here. And we're showing a kind of a, a special paving area that would have uh, seating for people to eat lunch and they could watch kids playing in the fountain. Uh, in the center part of this scheme, what we're calling Memorial Lawn, uh, the uh, Civil War Memorial is, is uh, right here, kind of right now. So we're actually um, proposing that it be rebuilt and centered in the park. And then in this scheme, we're saying, what if we had a performance stage on the back of the memorial instead of occupying the memorial itself. And this allows us to take advantage of the sloping lawn to put in some terraced seating. So we talked last time about the fact that this orientation wasn't ideal due to afternoon sun, but we do think there's some merit in using the topography to kind of terrace seating so that uh, people could sit you know, in this embankment up here, they could sit in terraced, uh, kind of radius, uh, kind of stepped lawn panels. And this back part right here would be the stage part. So from the front, um, it's the, the memorial, and on the back, it's the stage. Uh, in this concept, we were taking the flagpole that is enormous that's over here and actually putting it right in the center of the park. So. Do, do you have any concept what that's involved with? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure you do. Yep. No, it's, I know We're it's talking, a big... If it's under 20,000, I'd be surprised. I, I agree. So you mean, you mean in terms of weight? Moving it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, the, oh, the cost. Yeah. 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 No, I'm, we're, we're thinking big. 
So well, this is all concept. This is all. I concept. understand. I understand. And I just want to make sure. Sure. There, yeah. There's no sense going down a path where it's going to get shot down. Yeah. And we have schemes where it doesn't move. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we felt like the scale of that, it really could kind of make the center space and be very prominent. Um, right now, it's kind of tucked in these trees over here. And um, for this scheme, we proposed moving it. But I, I told Hannah on the way here, somebody's going to object to that. So <laughs> got that. Um, Actually, if I can interject, yeah. Warren, is your, is your point simply about the cost of it? What, what about just the idea of having it moved to the center of the park? Would that be OK? Well, if the bottom line was going to be moved, I'd do away with that big five pole okay. and put a smaller, more realistic one that you could. That, okay. that okay. Would, it, would, it would be under the cost of moving this current. You're current. probably right. And you're, are you yeah. okay with the location yeah. of being more central? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we'd become emotional about it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the, service, the service flags to the east of the Civil War, I see they're gone. No. Nope. Uh, that would be a. They're out in front. Oh, they're out in front of our? They're in they're front of. Front. Yeah. In front of the memorial. They could be in back. It's just we're picturing it, the stage how we do that. It would be in back of the stage because the viewers would be up the hill now from Q. Yeah. No. So we're, you're talking right. about between Q and R. No. Uh, no, they're right below Those dots. R, right? Yeah, right there. Those dots below R. Or they could well, that's those little dots. Those, yeah, those little dots. They could be between Q and R also. Yeah. So I, yeah. I want to make sure we don't get too far into the weeds yeah. on this, because we're, we're yeah. talking big picture now. But as but a part of the memorial reconstruction, we would want to look at where they made sense. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And they would go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I do feel like, you know, right now the memorial up in this corner, I, I do feel like this gives it a much more prominent um, uh, status. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're going to rebuild it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to just put it right back in the same place. I think we can kind of elevate the stature of it and make it a centerpiece for, for this whole kind of center portion. Uh, moving on to the southern end, um, we, you know, had talked about how the ladies' uh, fountain is such a, a dominant feature of the north part of the park. Um, we were thinking it would be nice if there was something uh, complementing it in the south end. And in this in this scheme, um, we're really looking at, at kind of a mini park within a park. So. Uh, we would have some planting around the perimeter of the park, and it could be that we take some of the planting uh, from the embankment here and relocate it into this area. Uh, we've also arranged the walkways through this park that they're centered on these uh, monuments. So they kind of call more attention to the monuments. You're focused on them when you're heading towards or heading through the park. They stay in the exact same location. Um, with the, uh, I know, this one Except Z. Except K-I-A-M-A-A. Oh, that's relocated. I could probably sell that because it might be more meaningful in that location. Yeah. Um, Which one? It's rotated. Oh, it's so rotated. It's You're right. Yeah. Yeah, this one um, right now is kind of at an angle. Um, that's, that's the K-I-A-M-I-A. Okay. Monument. That's the only one I couldn't remember the name of. Yeah, that's the, Okay. Why do you think it would be okay to move it? Why I think it would be better? Yeah, well, it might be okay, yeah. It, it's sort of in a clump of trees there now. It is. Mm -hmm. And you don't really see it. If it was there, mm -hmm. you'd have whatever that V was, yeah. and you'd have that as a background. I think mm -hmm. it would stand out more. Mm -hmm. I, do too. I could sell that one. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. And this structure right here is a very kind of light, um, it's basically a, a replacement for the bandstand that's over by the ladies. It's a smaller one um, because in this scheme, we're saying that there's a, a new stage behind the, the memorial in the center of the park. So this is a little bit smaller. We have another scheme where it's a little bit bigger. 
But this um, memorial here would be centered on this, this long uh, axes and walk through the park. There's also uh, one of the, the concepts that you'll see throughout the different uh, schemes is um, taking these buildings, so the, the monumental steps that are in front of these two civic buildings, carrying it forward so that there's a direct relationship to the park. So there's stairs uh, and walkways that, that align uh, with the park there. And we've, we've kept this area open visually too so that there's more kind of interaction between those buildings and more visual uh, ability to see them. And in all the schemes, we are proposing to put a curb on this uphill side of the park to catch stormwater. And once we get into the details of a particular scheme, we'll look at the feasibility and the sizing and costing of that. But um, so this would, would have a curb introduced to catch all the water that comes uh, from the east uh, into the park. And in this scheme, we're showing the whole of Church Street as potentially um, a different pavement with perhaps the pattern kind of recognizing the two civic buildings on Church Street. Um, I realize this is a very uh, not cheap proposal, but we like to start kind of with um, you know the pie in the sky, and then we can always scale it back and when we start looking at, at pricing of the different things. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, yeah. um, around V, the, the Yeah. Um, oh, yes. This, there's a different paint, like. That is. So that is what we're just, for the master plan, we're labeling as special paving. But okay. it doesn't mean it has to be expensive paving. It could be um, what we call stone dust, because we'd be leveling this area out so it's flat. And it's not a primary walking surface, so it could be um, compacted stone. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you look at the old images of Taylor Park, all of these walkways were compacted stone, and the mm -hmm. trees were actually growing out of mm -hmm. the walking surface. Mm -hmm. Not as practical today when we need to keep sidewalks plowed and sidewalks accessible year-round, but it's a very economical, and it has a nice, nice character to it. Mm -hmm. But the reason they got rid of it is because it eroded so badly. Yeah, and that's why you only use it in completely flat areas. Yeah, well, there are, not, there are any in the park. Well, it we're we're saying this would be flattened out. Could you do okay? Yeah. But can you do treatments around it to to fight the what do you call the, the sheeting? The sheeting. Yeah, and that's you know a detail we would get into. There'd be a French drain or something on the uphill side and. But um, it's, you know, you look through all the parks in major cities in Europe, and it's still a very viable um, material for parks. It's very inexpensive to put in. You do have to maintain it. But if we've found if you have it on an area that's not sloping, it's, it's pretty easy. And it brings back a little bit of the historic character that, that Taylor Park had. Question where the corlets go. What's that? The corlets. They are right here. They're, um, this is conceptually, we can move them around, but they're located right up, up here, close in close proximity to the play fountain where people are eating uh, with tables and chairs. I have a question. Yeah. Um, well, I think about Warren, I think about the museum a little bit with Civil War days and there's yeah. horses and encampments and how does the horses <laughs> hanging out incorporate into this a little bit? <clears throat> I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm asking. Yeah. I don't, there may not be a I, special place or is there, I, they, well I like all the gardens and it's beautiful and it's awesome, Yeah. but then I think of <clears throat> horses packing down the soil where it doesn't grow now because of yep. year after year of those horses being there in between those trees. And I like the idea of the horses when they come from the war days and all that. So that's where I'm just asking. Yeah, we, we haven't designed anything specifically for them. Yeah, I know. Because I don't know that there's yeah, that's like, like a... That's what I mean. A need or a... a some, I mean, if there is something that... I know, I just think about... 
what now Alex is going to have a hard time with when he's planning the Civil War days I don't with the you know what I mean like I well, guess well, I think that when it comes to the horses I'm just thinking they need a they need a nice they need a nice wide space to do their demonstration mm -hmm. and then normally when they're tied up they find a corner under some shade and uh, and they're gonna kill whatever grass they're on no matter where you put yeah. them so you're just gonna have to re-turf yeah yeah oh, and, and and I think you know maybe but you could do things you I, I see potential places where you could say we're gonna put the horses here we're gonna put some stuff down to help with the grass and yeah um, well I think that's one of the advantages of this along with the farmers market is keeping this center part open is to accommodate some of these larger space needing activities reenactments farmers market and you do have these uh, trees that are colored this color are the existing trees I should have mentioned that um, and these darker trees are kind of nurse crop trees that we would introduce you know to start growing so that when you know the time comes that a storm damages one of these big trees there's something growing in close proximity so. and so these are also new trees so we're proposing a tree lined edge right now there's uh, trees existing between the sidewalk and the street, but we're proposing a, a stronger tree line edge on that edge. So the reason there aren't any trees there is the original concept that we worked with the last time was to create vistas. So yeah. when you're on Main Street, you have a clear view of the fountain. You move down, you have a clear view of the Civil War Memorial. Yeah. Uh, so that's why there are no trees there. Uh, that was that was the whole point. Was so yeah. You didn't. We were fearful of losing the back. If you're standing on Main Street, yeah. You've got trees right in front of you. You can't see the park. You can't see the buildings behind it. You're losing that beautiful vista of the park with its background. Yeah, and I uh, I, I agree. I think so. um, we I think we gained a lot by opening up the outer edges of the park, also in terms of security. Sure. Yeah. But it helps, you know, being able to sit here at Twigs. Yeah. You know, and look up into the park and also see what's going on in the park. Yeah. Or anywhere else on this stretch of Main Street. Mm -hmm. Or as you come up Lake Street, being able to see suddenly this huge vista of. Uh, also, we gotta keep in mind the uh, the black obelisk kind of does need a good sight line from the top of Lake Street, but. Um, it helps create that connection with downtown, yeah. being able to see. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we're, you know, a lot of that can also be in, to some degree, in tree selection. If you're selecting something that's a V-shape versus, you know, a rounded shape or low branching. Um, but I think that's a really good point. Um, did these, these trees were just planted, though, right? Yeah. As part of this uh, tree Yes. There were other trees. Well, the ones on the south end were there, I think. There's four or five that were there. The, the more recent ones, there's two elms, which are, they planted four elms, and two of them are dead uh, now. And uh, there's, I think there's one or two left, and there's another one on the end. That's a, that's a good point. Um, I mean, we were picturing that you could see beneath the canopy, at least up into the, the mid part of the park. But when if you will you be see, able to? What's that? Uh, when day you'll be able to? Yeah, no, that's true. It won't obstruct those views in a hundred years. We would have to actually look at a section through here to see um, to see what it would. And what size what trees are you thinking about starting with? With that? Uh, oh, the at, at the master plan level, well, we're I mean not the, even. The elite part, you know, the right here. Oh, yeah, the wide, yeah. because it's hard to get that shape so soon. I yeah, guess. I mean, we because would. Because, you know, I've seen the size of elm trees now. Yeah. And they block a lot of view <coughs> until they get big, and they're not a very pretty looking tree. They, um. That's. Yeah, I, just, I don't know, to yeah. go from a beautiful flowering crabapple tree to a. I think not it's. So nice leaved kind of. It's more tree, the scale of the tree and the, the space that the tree makes and the shade. And I guess I would, you know, argue that small flowering trees totally block your view across the park um, because their canopy is so much lower. Mm -hmm. No, I understand that. It's just, and, it's you know, to we were showing things. these as possibly being spaded and relocated as a backdrop oh, okay. to mm -hmm. the fountain. So when you're looking down here, 
you're seeing the flowering trees behind the fountain. Yeah. So, but at the master plan level, we're, we're not even getting into tree sizes yet. Um, and we're just really talking about the overall organization. Do you want to go to the next? Yep. <laughs> I just want to make sure we get, get through all of them. Um, so uh, this, this uh, concept B is um, a little bit similar on, on this side of the park. I mean, I think the, the whole thing with the north end of the park and the ladies, you know, it's, it just needs cleaning up and pavement and, you know, curbing and things around planting beds to kind of define um, some of the classical geometry of the, of the north park. Um, so really, you know, this one, there's some similar things. Um, again, we're showing uh, the interactive fountain on this end. Um, we're uh, showing the bridge coming back. But all of these things can be kind of integrated or not integrated in the final scheme. So just because we've shown this twice in two schemes doesn't mean we have a preference for it or anything. Um, we did, um, I should point out, we've, we've made a little bit more of an entrance at the corners of the park. Um, right now, the sidewalk kind of cuts the corner, but we're thinking you know, that could be dressed up with a, some special paving, some planting, as kind of marking an entrance to the, to the park. And we've also shown in a lot of the schemes these making a little bit more of kind of this intersection of the walk that goes along Main Street and the um, crossing at these two points. And that kind of creates an entry point to the park. In this scheme, we've kind of uh, taken the two thirds of the park at the south and we've kind of introduced this form, this oval, which you know is a very classical form from um, late 19th century, early 20th century decorative arts, park planning, town planning. And we felt like it, it started to kind of create a, a framework and, and make kind of a, a more inward central focused uh, portion of the park. We, in this one, you know, we're not, we're proposing that the um, Civil War Memorial get rebuilt um, and move over a little bit to the center um, of the park, but we're not proposing a, a stage in this scheme. In this scheme, we're taking a, a historic looking Victorian uh, metal and glass uh, structure and introducing it at the south end of the park so that this really becomes kind of a big performance area. And it has the advantage of not looking west for the afternoon sun. Um, so people could set up uh, chairs and blankets around here, out in the lawn. Um, so we're, we're kind of creating this one big uh, feature uh, at the park. And uh, still, it, it, you know, having these diagonal walks through here, this would get uh, leveled out a little bit where you would have uh, seating steps uphill and seating steps looking down on the, the downhill side. Uh, we also are reinforcing this form with uh, gardens and planting at the corners and benches all the way around this, this form. Um, let's see. Where, where's the dole boy? Oh yeah, and then in this scheme, uh, looking at Church Street, we've said, okay, what if we just uh, redo the paving in front of, kind of, the, from the History Museum to the courthouse, and this is kind of a more scaled back um, version, and, you know, for events, you could, uh, you could have these removable bollards at both ends, that way people could still come in, get to this drive, they can still come in and, and you know, this street is still uh, operational. So we thought this was kind of a good uh, scaled back version of, of having Church Street be uh, pedestrian for major events. It opened up that whole upper sidewalk too. I mean, 
both sidewalks on the yeah. side of the street. Yeah, and that's a good point. We're if we put a curb in here, we're also proposing a, a small sidewalk along that edge of, of Church Street. Mm -hmm. And that would lead to there's these kind of uh, handicap access areas that are at uh, one in twenty, so they don't need any handrails. Um, a little bit easier to remove snow and maintain the existing handicap ramp and. I realize it's it's a recent addition, so um, you know we like to think of these master plans as something to work toward over time. Um, that existing ramp is the zigzag is kind of right where those stairs are. But the new diagonal walkways, like where it end is, yeah. as you said, would meet a ADA. Yes. Slope. Yep. Yeah, they're just longer, and instead of switch back. Um, they're just a straight, straight shot. The reason, one of the things on the diagonal walkway, one of the, our goals was to eliminate all the stairs in the park for liability reasons. Huh. We have a lot of seniors and yeah. people that use the park, come to the concerts and things like that. Yeah. We were trying to make it as friendly as we could for them. We had a, there was a set of stairs there before. We took them out and put the zigzag in. Oh, really? Okay. And on the other end, on the Bishop Street side, we, that is our truck entry. And I noticed that, that you didn't have, you don't have a truck entry. That's, I mean, that's something that, there's a lot of details. We don't show light poles yeah. or not. Well, we put that in intentionally there. And yes. It's, it's at the right angle so people can walk down. You know, tracks are given there, but people yeah. Are just yeah, I mean, but that's might, steeper than yeah, it is. It's a little steeper. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can provide railing. No, it, the railing. I think it's steeper than yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I mean, but that's just a matter of realigning the sidewalk to get that the right. Thing. Yeah. Or this has both. This has stairs and two options for ramps. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we would prefer not having. Walkways are ramped steeper than ADA for liability reasons, but um, and you know we feel like you know stairs and um, accessible points, barrier-free points, kind of can work together. Um, I do like the idea of dressing up the corners, especially the one down here on the main street in this corner down here. This was, one? Those two, mm -hmm. that one and the one on the other side. Yeah. Those two. I always felt that the Taylor Park signs, if we move that back a little bit, had a nice design, put the signs in the design yeah. in the park itself, would yeah. look nicer. I agree. You dress it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go to a really nice park, there's always a nice entry sign. Yes. Yeah. Working around your entry. Yep. Yeah. I think the reason that they are where they are now is so people can see them traffic wise. From the street. Yeah. Uh, most of our way uh, signs were. Right. Way longer traffic. For, for I like the geometry that, that comes forward. Yeah. Well, the other problem was, that, and that we thought about on those corner things, we, we had a long discussion uh, a while ago about so many signs. Yeah. You know, okay. walking your dog and uh, parking and uh, you know, hours of the park, no smoking, you know, just all these signs. It becomes kind of a visual. Exactly. Sign. So what yeah. we were thinking was at the entry points, we would have some nicely done sign that incorporates yeah. as much of that as possible at one time. Yeah. Get it over with, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Uh, so that we didn't have, if you look down Church Street on the, if you're looking from the north to the south, you look down that line, I think there's something like 17 signs in the, in the walk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And because every time something happens, we put up a sign. And that's something in the, the next drawing iteration, we'll look more closely at yeah. sign locations, billboard, <clears throat> or uh, yeah, um, notice boards, mm -hmm. light pole locations, things like that. But So, can we talk about the Lee concept that you have coming back? Or this? Now? Yeah, this yeah. year. So, <clears throat> There's one iconic picture of the park, and it's from, I think, 1915, 16, somewhere in that area, where from where uh, the fountain down through the center of the park, it was much, much wider. It was almost like a, a wide boulevard. I, I would have guessed it was probably. You're talking about this? Yes. Yeah. All the way down through there was, 
I'm going to guess it was 15 feet wide. Yeah. And yeah. around that, where you have G in there now, it was much wider on both sides of that also. Yes, and, and it had trees. Lined with benches. And trees were coming up yes. out of the, yeah. yeah. And, well, and it, knowing the age of those trees, I mean, in 1915, those trees were at least 100 years old, if not more. Yeah. So they were, yeah, they, were there. There. they were there at a time uh, long before the park was designed. Yeah. But in any case, uh, the one thing that always struck me about that picture was people strolling. Yeah. You know, somebody sitting or reading a newspaper, somebody yeah. pushing a baby carrier. Yeah. It made it so pedestrian friendly. Yeah. And the big trees provided shade. Yeah. And things like that. Yeah. But big trees in an Ali, I can tell you from our, having worked many, many garden situations in parks. Uh, it is a very difficult thing to get, to maintain. And, and, and elms, it's almost impossible, because they die so quickly. And I don't care if you have disease resistance yeah. or not, they don't live. And they keep dying on you. Uh, so that's, I think you could find trees, so I think yeah. you could find oaks or sure. maples or whatever. Yeah, and it doesn't still have to be. Find the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and you, you see we have, I think, six or seven 150-year-old maples in the park now. Yeah. Uh, I like that idea. We put the um, apple trees, the crab apple trees, were put in there in the 60s, Yeah. And late 60s. And um, even then, it wasn't, as you can see, we added three more. We took an old yeah. maple tree out and yeah. tried to clean it up. And if I, I, I have proposed actually many times that we slowly take out what's there and replace them with something that's a little more, they will never maintain well. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest problems we when we look at design is we've got to make sure that we're not putting in something that's very difficult to maintain. Sure. Because we don't have the expertise. Yeah. And, and if you hire the expertise you need, it's very expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and at the master plan level, you know, I mentioned elms because of the old uh, right. historic uh, images, but at the master plan level, we're going to be describing the characteristics of the tree instead of a yeah. species. So, right. But I think you're right. You could do the same thing with oak. Uh, maples, sometimes it's hard to keep, you know, lawn under them, but... Um, you know. Well, that would be the Norway, but if you use the sugar maple, and sugar maples will do well because it's good drainage in there. Yeah. Yeah. I do like the idea of those big trees there because I think it's more architectural. Yeah, know, it space fits and the and grandeur of the and it's space. Like a, yeah. You know, it's like a cathedral effect. I, noting the comments that was made when they put the crab apple trees in there, the reason they put the crab apple trees in there is so they didn't overshadow the fountain looking from the south to the north. That was the reason. Because yeah. thinking if you got big trees, it would just overshadow the fountain. You wouldn't see it from that end of the park. Well, I think again, it's you know it's, the it's selection the of the tree. Yeah. yeah. But I think they were thinking that would complement huh. the fountain because it would be roughly the same height or a little bit lower than the fountain would be this grand edifice at the end. Yeah, I think you know having shade for the benches along here and just the width of this to me, the crab apples just seem kind of underscaled for that, but... Um, yeah, the alley is isn't defined. You What's get it? lost here. The alley isn't defined. We have an alley of trees. Yeah. Like you're proposing, yeah. that whole space gets defined and it throws a focus on the fountain. I think so. Where here, it sort of bleeds out into the park. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure I like having the trees surrounding the fountain. I like being able to see it from Main Street. Yeah, that's... No. You know, one the previous scheme had them just here and there. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of gradually replacing them, uh, kind of working with the assets that are present, and uh, maybe finding a way to plant the trees that will mature over time around the crab apples, which will die well before the shade trees are really shade trees. Yeah. But not just to take out what's there to replace it with a nice idea. Sure. Yeah, and you know, like in the last game, I mean, I, I actually like the crab apples as a backdrop yeah. for mm -hmm. the fountain when you're walking yeah. down here. Yeah. The other side of that is that you don't see the fountain as much from that side, but there's actually already some crab apples over there. Yeah. So. 
Incredibles are a nice human scale. I mean, yeah. you can sit under them. They're Nice. They look great with the Christmas lights on. They do. Yeah. They do. They, yeah. they flower pink. They flower well, I mean, so would a huge shade tree, but we don't, it's going to, it's really futuristic. So, like, which is cool. we should probably move on to the yep. next one. So, we also have some sketches and things to go through. So, before we could, could yeah. back to just a second. So, the real emphasis here is that we have performance space on the south end of the park. Yeah. I mean, that's really the focus of this. Yeah. So that people could sit and enjoy a performance there. Yeah. Because we've always thought about the performance space being on the, on the west side of the park because you had the advantage of the slope. Yeah. But that gives us an opportunity to maybe flatten an area in the middle of the park, have a performance space, and then have people be able to enjoy that back on the lawn. Yeah, and I think that, that's, an, that's an original idea that we haven't considered. And I think also having this as an architectural complement to... Um, oh, the absolutely. I also like, and one of the things I didn't see on this page that has come up um, when we do concerts is a nice place to sell food and concessions yeah. near, near the concert. Right now people have to... People can sell small things from carts near the yeah. gazebo, but there's normally a food truck that has to park up on Church Street. People yeah. can walk up there. But now around the uh, item V, yeah. there's a flatter space where. Yeah. Yeah. This you could have you know carts, carts around there. I mean, you'd probably still want the food truck up, up there, but. Um, yeah, but for that matter, they if. You could have them on the on the north end of that old, on that big archway. It could be a great place for food carts for people to yeah. go back and um, you know get a hot dog and ice cream or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of possibilities there. Can I I'm gonna add a comment. And yeah. I'm the last one to want to take down trees, but that south end of that park is dark. It is. And I think if we're gonna try and do events there. We either got to thin the trees or do something to get a little more light in there, so well, it this, feels a little more welcoming than it does now. This does uh, propose, you know, clearing out the center of it there for this for the structure and to kind of create that. Yeah. So the longevity of there's four trees in there. They're all in the very end of that. Yeah. 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 There's one. There's one that's really bad. That's, yeah. The, the core is gone. Yeah. So, I would say in the not too distant future, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I think the trees, I yeah. think there's two big trees that, that are reasonably healthy. Unfortunately, the one that was in the most health is the one that's interfering with the flagpole. But, yeah. and, that, and that's a very old tree. I mean, that tree is at least 150 years old. In this concept, that tree comes down. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the flagpole stays, that's its current location. So. Mm -hmm. And it stays right there. Yeah. But we had, we had actually way back 10 years ago, we had talked about doing a very, not doing that particular concept, but putting a balancing circle on the other end of the uh -huh. park and taking those trees out. Yeah. Okay. There, there was a row, we planted, there was a row of trees that's planted on the park side of the sidewalk that goes uh, east and west there along uh, Fairfield Street. Yeah. So there's, uh, I think there's seven or eight trees. There's, um, most of them are maples. There's a couple of Norways. There's a couple of um, sugar maples. There's a couple of oaks in there. And then there's a small garden bed. And then on the outside, we decided that we didn't want to shade that too much. So we planted understory trees <laughs> on that side rather than plant uh, you know, uh, canopy trees. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of consideration there. We, we, yeah. we knew it was dark, and we didn't want it to get an easy dark. That was yeah. the point. Yeah. And, uh, well, and the maples have a really dark shade. You know, well, the Norway dense. maples do. Yeah. The sugar maples don't, but the yeah. Norway maples are terrible. Yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll kill the grass. But we're not planting any of those anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, sorry. That's all right. No, no. I, I, I just wanted everybody to, understand, yeah. to see a concept that we haven't it, we haven't considered before, yeah. that, and that's a good one. Is that a retaining wall above V? Like there's, uh, no, there's those steps are, on W. Those are steps. Okay, so steps above and below. 
The w steps. face is light speed. Those steps face. These steps light face. Light face right. Um, face right. Speed. Yeah. You you and walk up face. the steps from like, and then you continue walking up them toward church. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you talking about up here? No. Or these? Right. Yeah. Those. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so um, finally, the, the last concept that we came up with, concept C, uh, takes a different approach a little bit in that it takes the existing double walkway LA and extends it through the center part of the, the park. Um, it also moves the interactive fountain down to the south end, kind of at the entrance to this this park here and uh, rebuilds the Civil War Memorial as a dual memorial stage. So um, in this scheme, you know, this memorial and, and stage is kind of the counterpart to the fountain at the north end of the park. The other thing that I uh, discovered and was, was kind of interested in, right now the, the parallel walk that goes along Main Street you end kind of up east of the crosswalk yeah. where you yeah. continue across, which I find kind of an odd uh, feature. So in this scheme, we really made a bigger deal out of the, the center crosswalk entry to the park and uh, curved the walk to kind of, so you meet up with the crosswalks at both ends. So um, you no longer walk parallel and then do a little jog which Hannah and I thought was kind of a nice, nice idea. Um, we, in this scheme, we showed a retaining wall, seat wall that would flank both sides. Um, we thought that would be kind of a nice, nice kind of uh, entry feature and when you're driving by to kind of see this uh, edge of the park and then have an entrance here that, that goes straight up. Um, in this scheme, we do relocate the flagpole into kind of a central location, um, just because with what we were proposing here, it was it was getting in the way. Um, this one, uh, instead of kind of the oval that we had, we've got these these walks. We've realigned the walks coming into the fountain, so they actually center on the fountain, and they kind of arc through the, the park mm -hmm. as a kind of continual motion you know, through the park, just as a, another alternative. Mm -hmm. And that was Jeff's idea for, um, if you look at the windows of yeah. the churches on Church Street, they all have that sort of arcing Gothic window. Mm -hmm. Arch so that, window. That was so, the concept behind yeah. that. I really like that flow. The splash pad is right now in a pretty dark area, but it looks like there are really a lot of trees um, gleaned, trees opening up. Removed, right yeah, yeah, right here, exactly. And, and the idea here, you know, we, we heard you know, people say, well, I want this to stay kind of a contemplative, um, quiet area. And we thought if you're a family and you're coming to watch a performance, the kids could actually play in close proximity to the performance. Mm -hmm. Um, so we felt like that was kind of a nice relationship um, that, you know, they're not too far away and there's plenty of, of room here for people to spread out on the lawn. Um, this one, I, just for the heck of it, I, I opened that back up into kind of a lily pond, koi pond um, concept. Um, mm -hmm. I realize that's uh, maybe too much maintenance, but... I had to. I just had to show that it's water again in one second. That's a lot of koi fish. It is. Yeah. Make it big. Make it big. Then you have the bridge. You can go arms. Yeah. <laughs> but we did you contemplate. You can take them home for the winter, right? Yeah, we did contemplate. There had been, historically, there had been other fountains in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the original was a globe fountain. Like a dandelion head. head. Yeah. There had been two of them in there, and then they put the bridge across, and they, yeah. but they all deteriorated over time, and uh, it got kind of left. The, uh, the 
the bed that we dug up was built in 87. So it, was, it huh. wasn't, you know, people were very angry at me for digging up that historic bed. And I, when I pulled out the PVC pipe and yeah. everything, I said, nah, it wasn't as historic as you thought. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but we did feel that the original intent was to have that continuous water yeah. idea. And I, I still feel that's a great concept. I, I don't know about a koi pond. Yeah. One of our problems is step off issues in the winter, covering and all yeah. those kinds of things. That's why we took it out in the first place. Yeah. So putting back something that has a barrier edge could be, uh, we had several design concepts we did I'd be glad to share with you. One was uh, using limestone and have, are you familiar with the Japanese garden up in Montreal? Yeah. The, yeah. That idea only on a small scale on the inside yeah. of the pool in the middle. I mean, there, there were a lot of great ideas. And I think that would, I don't know, extend something from Monty into yeah. that, you know, the concept of the mountains or some kind of flow idea. We also had a great concept of, of uh, which was very simple, uh, very shallow, but replicating something they did at the 9-11 War Memorial where the yeah. water flowed over yeah. the outside into a curve, but very shallow and had an edge. It was very yeah. pretty, very, I saw one done in black basalt. It was just spectacular. Yeah. And we it actually this, this water is this presented one of those at the last meeting and it seemed like people were concerned about kids in this, kids in the, we were trying to get them right. into the so we felt like if you turn this back into a fountain where it looked inviting, you might get kids. Well, that's why we were thinking concepts where they couldn't get into it. Yeah. I was thinking if there were fish and lily pads, they might. <laughs> I thought that's what I told them. If there's going to be a water change there, <laughs> yeah. it needs to be in bright sunlight. Yeah. It needs to be really wide open. Yeah. Yeah. So this, I think, um, yeah. I'm interested in, in a concept for the, the big rectangle where um, you know we have a concept for more of the, the planting area that we have now. Yeah. And that's like that's what Native. we do for now. But if we could have a concept for bringing back a pool or a large fountain feature that you know we could attempt when we think we're ready for the maintenance. Yeah. Because um, Right now, the fountain itself, it takes about all the maintenance yeah. we, we can give in the, um, in the park, and... The garden is maintenance free. Well, no, it's cost. not. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's not it's maintenance free, but I tell you what, <laughs> water features. All right. Keeping yeah. them running, keeping them sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, when we thought about, you know, that rectangular area could be the interactive fountain, but we felt like it was just too close to that. That, you know, here is one thing, and here is, I think, even more removed and, and maybe better, but um, I think, I would say that, I think it's important for this to kind of remain historically as this rectangle. You know, I think if we got too much towards a naturalistic feature, it might, kind of detract from the formality of the ladies' fountains. So. Can I ask a question about the performance spaces? Yeah. Um, so it may, again, it may not be for this level of detail yet, but between concept A, B, and C, yes. is there any sense of scale to type of performance, maybe? Would you say that, you know, A has a lot more opportunity than, um, than B and C, or, or are they all fairly similar in terms of what they could accommodate? A and C have a more traditional stage and are the same size. And you know, and that's something that, you know, we're gonna show in the master plan the actual design and size would be a whole nother when it gets to the point where you're actually gonna do it, you would wanna kind of look at the sizes of your typical performances and you know the temporary stages that you bring in for Nipple Fest and all that. In terms of envisioning maybe the type of things that are possible yeah. are all similar. Yeah, well except the um, in B, the big um, uh, band shell, I think I would say that the band shell shape is maybe less um, what performers would like, you know, because it's got columns all the way around it. The, the one in A and B is more kind of wide open, so, um, you know, there's not, there's really not anything blocking your view. Um, 
However, in B, it, it's in a rectangular space. You could, it is. You could create a rectangular stage, a more you conventional could. stage. But I think in, yeah. Yeah? No, you could. And in here, the, the flagpoles are behind the stage, so they're the backdrop for the, the stage. What is your thought there of combining the memorial? Is that where you're combining the memorial? No, that was in the first game. Oh. Uh, well, we're combining them. In C, they share the same stage. In A, there's the memorial stage, and then the performance stage is separate. But you know, on this one, it, it wouldn't work because you don't want the memorial facing the street. Um, so we can very much combine them. Yeah. Like the backdrop of the stage would be the inscription we use. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I want to um, move on to the image board and kind of get to the sketches so we have a, a good amount of time to kind of finish the things. Is that this? Yeah. So this, um, oops. this is what we put together. It's just an image board. Um, the first row is looking at you know, classical ovals in parks and in decorative arts and in new projects. Um, it's kind of making a bit of a comeback in some major urban parks. You know, the, the Gothic uh, windows of the church kind of uh, as an inspiration for some of those schemes with the arching uh, pass through it. The um, terraced seating in the hillside, um, these are all kind of different ways to show, show that. Those are great. Um, and the historic bridge, um, looking at that. Um, so, curbing um, the historic water feature. And then perimeter edges for some of these schemes where we're saying, you know, that the southern part of the park is kind of its own space. Do we introduce um, planting or low kind of wrought iron uh, railing? So you can see through, but it kind of gives it a sense of enclosure. The concept of the shared street with paving, um, places for tables and chairs. This is actually, um, the uh, small version of the um, Victorian uh, band shell. Uh, just looking at the, the alleys, um, let's see, movable tables and chairs, benches, trash receptacles. This is, uh, this is one of the files that went out on email, and uh, we have handouts of it too. And these are just, they're not the exact thing we're proposing, we're just showing examples of of different things and the interactive fountain with lighting built into it um, and then you know the the cover for the stage it'd be nice if it was something very light and not kind of heavy and imposing um, something you know the advantage of something like this it throws the sound out that's another thing with the band shell I'm, I'm not sure it's that great for acoustics whereas when you're creating a stage, even in, combined with the war memorial, there's the opportunity to, like the angled walls of the memorial also will help to get sound out the front. And the lily and coin pond. <laughs> so why don't we go to the sketches. Great. So this is just uh, showing you know, the idea of reintroducing steps and aligning walks with uh, the two kind of civic buildings, the courthouse and the history museum. The next, uh, next one is uh, scheme A, where you're looking north, and this is where the sidewalks come together, the interactive play fountain, and you can kind of walk around. And it's kind of, I think, kind of nice that you see the interactive fountain as the foreground for the historic fountain in the background. This is uh, scheme, oh, this is scheme A also, uh, looking south. So this would be the small band shell, um, not the one uh, in scheme B that has the, that's big for performances, but just an <coughs> architectural feature uh, to kind of balance the uh, the ladies' phone. 
Will that have a roof on it for rain? Yeah. So this one that I showed has a glass roof so that it stays kind of, it doesn't create a dark mm -hmm. space. Nice. <clears throat> or is the KIA MIA monument in that scheme? It uh, is, you know what, I, it would be behind it, but I actually didn't, I forgot to sketch it into this, so it would be directly behind there. This is uh, the larger van shell, so scheme B. Um, the flagpole stays in its current location, and you get a larger van shell that could actually uh, hold performances. And this shows, you can kind of see the part of the oval walk. And then scheme C, the double walkways down, the fountain in the foreground, and then a, a rebuilt memorial combination stage with the flags behind it. And is there one more? Is that it? Yeah, that's, that's it. it. All right, well, I've talked for over an hour, so <laughs> I think it'd be good just to kind of. <coughs> I, I think our schedule actually says that you're going to take time and, and put comments together, but I think if we can start kind of talking about it a little bit more and um, talking about features. Uh, not, not. I don't expect you to say I like scheme A, B, or C, but um, maybe we talk about performances, we talk about water features, and um, discuss pros and cons of different locations. Can we can the light. We can the light. Oh yeah. Thanks. I think you guys have done a good job with three schemes, and I'm a little disappointed that it's not. Or it's not easier to say <laughs> oh. these are just <laughs> well. There's easy to say. Yeah. Right. Anna and I have oh. the same thing. So there's not one scheme that we like more than the you other. No, they so. all have such good things in everything. Mm -hmm. Good. And they're all some of the features are very dependent on that scheme. So you can't just say I like the way you did this part here. I'm just going to plug it over there. Yeah, because there are some it things doesn't that are, really fit me. Yeah. Yeah. When I when I think about. Um, and one of the things in the city council charge was to um, see how the how the park could become more of the economic part of the economic uh, you know cultural yeah. gathering you know event life in the downtown. And um, one of the things I like about where the Civil War Memorial is right now yeah. for the events that we use it for, which are normally Memorial Day and, and Veterans Day. Um, we've been getting a lot of people out at those, especially for Veterans Day. And, you know, being able to see it from the street, just looking at everyone up the lawn, yeah. you know, just a lot of people, and then the monument sitting at the top. You have the flag behind the monument. It's normally around 11 o'clock, so the sun's not a big issue. Yeah. Um, and then I think, you know, with the whole political aspect, of, I, 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 I agree the Civil War Memorial probably needs to be rebuilt, especially with the, the, um, the surface of it needs to be able to deal with winters better. Sure. But politically, I think it might be a lift to make more substantial changes to it. I like, what I like about the Oval is the new event space. Yeah. And whether it's that historic looking band shell or a different type of stage, um, you know, my, you know that, that could be up for debate. I think we do need something, there's a, there's a dedication on the gazebo to Edward Loomis that would have to mm -hmm. be taken into account. So whatever we create might have to be rededicated. Or, sure. Yeah. Um, but I also like, I like how the event space is a counterbalance to the fountain. I like how it's more open. Um, I love the trees in the park, but I don't. I don't want to plant too many trees and, and reduce that sort of the openness you have in the park right now. You can you can basically see whatever's going on in there, and yet it's still once you're in there, it's still a nice you know place. It's quiet, and you feel like you're you know somewhat um, uh, you're apart from all the city streets around you. That's one of the reasons why I like the oval idea. 
I agree with Chimp on that too. I like that it keeps the, the old space is open. It's for the farmer's market and the different type of uh, concerts and things. We have a good big space for that type of stuff. Uh, the way it counterbalances the fountain, I, I agree with Chip. I like that a lot too. I think that some of the issues with, in my opinion, with some of the other designs, B and C, or uh, A and C rather, um, Especially C, it just feels more segmented of the park, which I really, um, historically, I don't think that that's kind of what the park has been about. It's kind of been more of a green open space. Um, I like the fact that you're kind of separating the kids and family area to the right, and then the, the fountain and everything uh, where it originally is, but I just think that the oval really speaks to me in having that big, large green space for people to gather. and. Um, another thing for everyone to think about is kind of the financial aspect of this. I know it's really far in the future, but how we're going to pay for serious changes to Taylor Park is going to be something that we encounter once we're done with this master plan. So um, I feel like that B um, keeps a lot of things in the park. It does make significant changes. That's still making a new park, but it still feels like the Taylor Park to me that I've always known. So. Um, when you look into some of those other designs, we're adding a lot of things, changing walkways, moving monuments. And that is going to be very expensive, and um, that's something to think about in the future. So, good points. I want to throw in my vote for that for what these guys have said. Also, um, if you compare all of these concepts to the original park, the one that feels hmm. going back to what you're saying, the one that feels very yeah. similar and not cluttery and not yeah. making major changes is this this oval. Plus, I just love this. I think it's very historic, and yeah. it, it really kind of harkens back to uh, the part that was. Yeah, I, I like to think that when they had designed the fountain, if they had designed more of the park, it might have actually been something like that. Right. So it kind of right. feels like that. Yeah. It would be nice if the middle, if we did the oval, if the middle walkway was bigger through the open space. Yeah. And kind of tie that together more to keep the width. Because then that would be going back to that more historic, mm -hmm. wide, pedestrian sure. walkway, but it wouldn't interfere with that open space. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. I think it would be more like the. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. Doesn't need the trees, but if you opened up the walkway, it would really tie it. Yeah. I'd kind of like to see two of the trees gone from around the fountain that continued on the other side. Yeah. So the one continued off to the, well, this way it would be the left. So the, you're talking about these? Yeah, keep the keep the line. Take yeah. out the ones in the circle, and then continue the line on the other side of the fountain. <coughs> okay. That doesn't really interfere with any of the sight lines, but it just continues that sense of it being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that long stretch through. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't. I think the trees around the fountain kind of take. Depend. It doesn't really matter what tree it is, but just being able to see, like Jeff said, see the fountain from everywhere. Which yeah. I don't know if I said that, but seeing the fountain from everywhere and not blocking it in. I like the ally that you have coming down the middle, but just the. Around the fountain, too. So more like like that. Exactly. Yep. I wonder if there's a midpoint between <clears throat> the um, concept B, where the Civil War Memorial is um, restored mm -hmm. in its current form, and um, concept A, where it's it's both restored and reformed. It has to, so, yeah. I wonder if there's just like some kind of a little bit more generous and versatile um, form that it could take, um, even if that wasn't our main performance space, it was mm -hmm. just sort of another option. That's why, if I'm not mistaken, though, that's much further into the park, right? So we lose a lot of the open space there for? Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, in this one, it's, it's more in the center of the park. Mm -hmm. But I think you were saying um, keep this in its current location mm -hmm. rebuilt. Yeah, maybe I would think but it's kind of like out a, secondary. a little bit north. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's where we'd spread out to a little bit. In, um, and curved. Actually, in 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 B, did you did you move the Civil War Memorial to be at the apex of the oval, or I did, did you? I, okay. think I did. I think I did. Yeah, I think it's a little bit. Not um not a whole lot though. Oh, I see. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> you're right. Going to move yeah. that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to say something. Um, you've done a lot of excellent work here, uh, presented in, uh, in a very fine way. Uh, speaking from the veterans and the memorial, yeah. I'll get 
the organization together, lay out what you propose, and we'll come back to you with our thoughts yeah. on what we would like to see. That would be excellent. That would be awesome. Yeah. And they, they won't be radical, and they'll, they'll certainly uh, <laughs> give and take, too. Understand. Yeah. You've done a good job. I feel, yeah, yeah. I feel like all these That's plans great. actually really highlight all the memorials yeah. a lot more than yeah. they are now. They're sort of just yeah. stuck in shadow. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we'll come up with our total uh, yeah. That's all That's the great. veterans in the in the area. Great. Legion, VFW, Vietnam vets, and yeah. Awesome. And have a position. You Thank moved you. the war memorial a to little the south. A little bit. Actually, quite a bit. Because in the existing plan, it almost lines up with uh, the need to uh, church. Oh, yeah. The church. It, it's right. It's right there. Yeah. Right. yeah it's four centuries later. So it's 20 feet. And I, I, think it, it I think it would be better pushed back to where yeah, it was. Because then. you got to remember, he's realigned the sidewalk. No, so I, side I understand he's right away. Really so you're talking about yeah. in this case? Yeah. We push it back. Then we could take more advantage of the uh, the front lawn and have performances that it isn't tucked right. too far south. Right. Huh. Back where it Oh, emerges. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so really push yeah. it back there. Yeah. Push it back there. Yeah. I'm yeah. Right. I agree with Lazen on okay. more space in that, that open yeah. area. In this area. And it'd be... Yeah. You know, again, I hate to talk about taking out trees, but it'd be nice. The nice thing I think everybody's reacting to the oval is uh, it's it's historic, it's geometric, yeah. and it opens it up, but sort of the south end looks clogged. With trees. With trees. all the trees. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And, you know, I hate, you know, they can die off and stuff, but I, you sort of want to see more of a manicured oval yeah. in open area and it being sort of cluttered at the end. I mean, yeah. in my opinion. We got to go. Okay. And I, and I think you it's important, it's important to keep more copies. Oh, I got the park yeah. open for Main oh, Street. Yeah. You so you can see the fountains. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the one yeah. more. And the other pieces, you can see the buildings on Church. Yeah. All right. yeah. And these darker trees are just the idea of planting small trees that will someday, yeah. you know, when these, in 20 years, when some of these are gone, I love the LA of trees, but I think keeping the fountain open is very important. Yeah. I really like the water feature that you propose to see, but not the koi pond. Yeah. I like the idea of water. And the whole thing. Thank you. Thank you. And the thing that sort of comes to mind, and it's only an image, have you been to Boston to the Christian Science Center? Yeah. yeah. And you have this wonderful reflecting pool that yeah. no one goes in. Yeah. It's at a height where no one wants to go in. Yeah. And the dome and everything is yeah. reflected. Yeah. I mean, I could see if we could do something there and the, the yeah. fountain would be reflected in it, I think it would be fabulous. Yeah. Um, that to me is really what you would want to see there, that sure. this sort of calm reflecting pool in front of the font, which is really active and going on. Jeff, did you see the basalt reflecting pond at Chanticleer? Have you been down there? No. That's the one I saw. Okay. And it's, uh, it, the water's only probably two or three inches deep. Yep. It's black basalt uh -huh. and probably two, two and a half feet off the ground. And it, again, it's a perfect reflective it's a mirror. Yeah. Yep. But it had just enough shimmer to it that you see the water. It's nice about the one. And you didn't have to worry about anybody jumping in it. Yeah, the curse yeah. sun is the water just overflows. Yeah, yeah. Overflows yeah. And it's and it's just, it just has a nice calm really perspective. Yeah. I agree. If you ever get a chance, go on to Chanticleer's website. Okay. They did a picture of it there, and yeah. it, it is uh, spectacularly done. I don't know. It's probably I mean, it's, expensive, but. I may have seen it, but not known yeah. where, where, it, where it was. So. I like engaging Church Street. And, and if you go, and I think if you do go with the oval, maybe you do the shifting of the engagement more like you had in scheme A yep. than in scheme uh, B. Yeah, I like that. So you're saying go the full length well, instead I'm of saying, the I, I guess I see that as, as maybe taking this piece and pushing it over. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, this, this all here, because this, to me, this reads as one piece, yeah. and this reads as another, and it'd be nice if it was more inviting to these buildings here, yeah. rather than, because you're making this symmetrical, but the park isn't symmetrical. Yeah. This is a different feel from this. I mean, this piece is really... Yeah. But then you set. cut off the access on Bishop Street. Well, yeah. I know, I'm just, this, I'm this just was, saying maybe this was, just, I don't know how it lines up. Yeah, the, the museum and the courthouse, yeah. to me, you know, I, I think I can see both ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, no, there, there was an issue here because we took out the entry to the, the steps that come across the... Uh, the area between the sidewalk and the street on the church streets on the church side of the street in front of the museum we took that out we yeah. took one out in front of St. Paul's there were two there there's only one left we took one out it was between St. Paul's and the courthouse and the one left that we tried to take out that's still there is the bridal entry to the Congo church and the reason for that was, is we had these entries and people park on those streets yeah. and we were worried about people stepping out behind a car with cars coming down the street. Yeah. So we were trying to funnel people to the courthouse area where we had the crosswalk and we, you notice we dovetailed the, the yeah. sidewalks down so that they came across there. And then the other crosswalk was at the end of Bishop Street. We tried to make that very wide and, and, yeah. and handicapped, you know, it's got, cut down and everything. So that was the reason. If you've, uh, I have spent many, many days, and if you come to an event, like farmer's market's perfect, yeah. sit for a couple hours and see how people walk the park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that was a really important, we've done a really good job of bringing people to using sidewalks yeah. and staying in a good traffic pattern because when farmer's market is in the cars, Go in and out, in and out, in and out, in yeah. and out all the time. So that was one issue um, that we were trying to address by having the two major entries that we had. Which uh, so in your oval plan, that's you've gone back to that basic pattern of those two major entries, which I think uh, are really consistent with what we were trying to accomplish there. Mm -hmm. um, I also like the sidewalk along Church Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that we should that we should look at ways of using the park to take in some of the storm water from Church Street. Yeah. Maybe there's a way to get it under the sidewalk because you do have that entire green strip. Well, there is. Yeah, there, yeah, is. there are ways. I mean, some of it's grass, some of it's planted, but everything in that, in that section between the sidewalks, that's not step or that's not ramp, could be infiltration somehow. Yeah. Because otherwise it's really, <clears throat> not being used. Yeah. In, in concept B, it looks like between those two sidewalks, a lot of it is grass again. Mm -hmm. And some of it's planted. Yes, in B. Um, yeah. And under the, is that, are you talking about like under the grass could be no. drains? No, more like whatever you put in there slows water down so that it will go down. So grass won't be better than grass. If you use if you use some stone plus some planted materials, if you use certain shrubs, and much, much of what's already there right now. Right. Um, well, that bed was designed to slow the water down. Yeah. The sidewalk has two feet of crushed stone under it. Yeah. And there's a solid four or five foot sand gravel base underneath the entire park. It's a giant sand pit underneath the park. Huh. The filtration rate is so high, we couldn't measure it. It was so fast, the water went through the tube. So that's. So what we did out there, you'll notice that a lot of places along the curve, we've cut the curve out where the curves came together. Yeah. And a lot of, so across from uh, the Congo Church, the driveway, the courthouse, and these other places, the water comes right across, comes right down into the filtration area. And then, of course, that was a, a permeable sidewalk. Uh, but the water has never made the sidewalk. The water, yeah. uh, we've, we've been able to treat millions of gallons of water over the time by doing that design. And that was uh, that was actually paid for by the Champlain Basin Initiative and the design was done by them, so. Well, the next step, when we start to make a, a combination scheme of all the different parts, we are bringing the civil engineer in to kind of pick his brain for uh, stormwater ways to, you know, once we catch it at the curb, uh, ways to, to deal with it. I like the idea of putting these stairs back. I feel kind of 
complaints from, I get a lot, a lot of tours through my store on that, and they, you know, they don't want to have to go back and forth, and they're going up to the museum or that. Some of them find it very confusing finding where the access It's a matter of liability. But if we have the handicapped as well, we have lots well, of people taking it as out. Well. But That's we true, but stairs, even then. Can we add some stairs back in addition to? We, we can certainly yeah, explore right. it. Yeah. One of the issues here is, and we had this discussion with the insurance company way back, I mean, long, many years ago now, but the problem is in the wintertime. It's not the summer so much, but in the wintertime, they don't get shoveled. So someone uses the walk, falls, hurts themselves, who's liable? Did we create a public nuisance? Now, we took it out. Now, if we put it back, so we tried this. We said, well, let's just go safety first. We'll just do away with the stairs, and there are no stairs in the park. And that was a, there was a reason for that. Uh, you know, if we go to another thing, uh, I'm, I'm not objecting to it. I'm just telling you why we did what we did. And the whole thing was we wanted to reduce our liability. There are definitely some, like, you know, worn paths through the grass now because people just cut straight through the beds because they don't want to do. It was very back interesting. Process. I think we had a conversation about having that whole back part being somewhat of a grassy, terraced stair sort of thing. It seems like we have this on A, yeah. where behind that bandstand yeah. part. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting way of, you know, incorporating that in the summer where people can sit there, they can hang out, they can also go up and down the stairs. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah. not to say that it solves both problems, having a stairwell and a place to hang out, but yet it sounds like it could mm -hmm. benefit both things and, you know, have that in more places. And it's like in, in concept A, it's not exactly a stairway yeah. to the same specs, right? Exactly. It's, a, it's more of a seating stairway. Yeah. 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 Which, are, which would seem to shift that whole liability conversation, right? We don't shovel them. Yeah, that's what You I'm use saying. them if they're available to be used, yeah. but you don't, you don't seek it out if stairs it's there. Yeah. No. Because it's kind of next to the park, it's just kind of there. Yeah. yeah. That's you can use amazing. it if you know it. Yeah. Sure, somebody trips. <laughs> I don't know. Do we get sued all the time? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. I get to be sheltered. From that. I mean, I'm not really what you're saying. I'm just telling you why we do. Oh, I wasn't. That's it. Yeah. No, it's I think. I think um, part of the reason why the old stairs were taken out too is because they were made of railroad ties. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. But we considered putting them back as soon. But we didn't have to. No, 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 that's right. Yeah, I considered that. We decided why well, don't just do a little more. If we were going to have granite steps around like a pavilion in the south end of the park, yeah. I would love to see them repeated, you know, think, aesthetically. Yeah. But think, the safety conversation is the the design of equal import. Right. 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 That's true. Right. Back, 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 when we were, back when we redid the Church Street section, we didn't put in stairs because we weren't trying to create a straight shot vista. Um, the the switchback ramp made sense and since we could do a ramp why do stairs but now we see a design where mm -hmm. you're trying to be able to get people straight across to the courthouse and straight across yeah. mm -hmm. to the um well near the museum um yeah yeah i mean we could certainly consider the stairs mm -hmm. and there's ways you know when we design uh concrete stairs we put in uh nosings that have you know traction on the mm -hmm. the kind of front part of the tread. Um, I could see where railroad ties to. Challenge. That was the very tripping hazard. Yeah. yeah. I like the ramps there. Yes. I mean, because you're going to have strollers and wheelchairs. Yeah. I really like the concept one. Concept A, and I think it's on these other ones, but the seating area, which would be H, I think, in concept yeah. A, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, it's a very good idea yeah. because there's so many people that I see that are balancing their lunch on yeah. their lap, sitting on a bench. <laughs> like yeah, you know, yeah. and yeah. having yeah. a place yeah. to yeah. sit is yeah. really nice. But we really like to promote. Uh, cafe tables and chairs, and then they just get locked up at yeah. night. Yeah. 
I've heard some cynics thinking that that's not going to work, but I, as a resident and taxpayer, would be like, no, let's try it because well, if they're we're bolted need to be in, trained. If they're bolted yeah. in and they're fixed, where nobody yeah. can steal, nobody yeah. can throw them at each other, yeah. nobody it's can do whatever. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of food there. Yes. 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 Absolutely. I'm not sure. I think combat that is passive seating, too. You see the grand blocks on Main Street. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah. Right. It's nice that that okay. where you have the old serve, you know, either the band shell or when you relocate the war memorial, serve the war memorial, it really becomes multifunctional. Yep. Yeah. I have to go. It's a really good idea how you have some of the walkways going, I'm not sure which one it was, but going around the monuments. Yeah. Because right yeah, now they're like kind of just yeah. sort of like plopped in the middle of the grass. There's so, no tying yeah, That was my favorite part of yeah, this one. No, yeah. yes, this one. Yeah. Yeah. It, had, it really, it really mm -hmm. treated the Doughboy, you got yeah. the novelist, they both have their... Yeah. So focus. is there a way we could take uh, concept C? Uh, you've got uh, the way you've got the uh, center there where the P is. Yep. Of moving that bandstand just a little bit, going back to the diagonals to the corner. Yeah. Which you've done here, because over on the on B, the only thing that I didn't care for was the way. One of the most heavily used entries to the park is that uh, southwestern corner right there. People come into the park that way, especially yeah. for farmers market and stuff like that. And see where it's truncated at the bandstand and you've got this long diagonal. Putting the diagonals back in there so you have the entries to the corners of the park and bringing them to that center and just moving that ahead just a little bit like you have in C. That really brings that gives you that symmetry brings your symmetry back to your mm -hmm. to the oval at least for mm -hmm. me. So that was one thing. Uh, the other thing is you, on a couple of these, you've got uh, the diagonals like um, concept B, which I really like. I do like the old. Uh, you've got the uh, diagonals F and uh, coming back. Now, we had diagonals in there, and we took them out. Yeah. And we had diagonals on the other parts of the park, too, and we took those out. Now, at the time, we did two things. We looked and see. We looked to see who's using them, yeah. and we decided, especially on the north end of the park, nobody was using them. They were virtually unused, and they were permeable surface. And we just felt it would look better as lawn than it did as sidewalk. So we took those out. On the other side, so the one thing I did when we took out the diagonals on the uh, south end of the park, I spent a lot of time watching for trails in the grass to see our people making their own sidewalk yeah and we have seen none huh. in the park you're so yeah you're talking about yep, the ones yep. kind of yeah we had one that went right across yeah the whole bottom of that oval and then we had one coming down from bishop street that came across and created that little baseball diamond in the, in the center there um, and so we've watched really close to see that and Still today, uh, you know, if I go down to the park to the farmer's market and it's busy, I'll just sit back and watch, mm -hmm. see what people are doing and how they're, and they really have, I like the alignment, uh, that's the other thing, the align, realigning the, the Bishop Street and uh, Lake Street line is a great, and the, and the courthouse and Twigs. Mm -hmm. That was an original concept that we, that you'll notice the zigzag lines up that way, and that's that was intended to actually remove those asphalt sidewalks and move those over. Yeah. The center, the, the, the center of the oval, uh, we had we had decided to put something down through there. We didn't come up with the oval idea, but um, and using in that one particular place a nice bricking pattern, you know, to make that yeah. unique and and wide so that it had a had a real boulevard feel to it. Um, I really like the entries. I think dressing up the entries is really important. I think yeah. it gives a certain panache to the park to would, would dress it up. The one thing I didn't see is lighting. Yeah, we haven't gotten to that yet. Because I, yeah. we had one of the design issues we had with, if you look at the oval and you got that long, is how do we get lighting in there to be unobtrusive? Yeah. You know, so that it it doesn't take away from the vista. Yeah. And doesn't take away from the the north south look at it. So I noticed you didn't do any lighting in here, but uh, that struck me because that's one thing we've struggled with regularly of how yeah. we would get lighting in there and make it look yeah. good. And that's something that we'll put on the final. Yeah. Final okay. Scheme. I do think I thought good stuff there. This was interesting and. Um,
in scheme B that have this crosswalk come through yeah. and, and actually, you know, it, it continues the Bishop Street. I could see mm -hmm. people traveling. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Whereas, you know, when you center it on right. um, the History Museum, you know, it's a, a little bit yeah. off. Yeah. And nobody uses that courthouse entry. Mm -hmm. You can stand up there for an hour and never see anybody use it. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Huh. They use the zigzag. Yeah. Because they they park along the street and they walk over there. Yeah. But very rarely, the only huh. time you get that used is if there's an event on the weekend and people are using the parking behind yeah. the courthouse and those churches. Yeah. Or they would then come down that way. But it other is, than that, there is no use for it. And that's really. That would really only be for architectural symmetry right. because the it's, courthouse is actually closed that front door. They yeah, it's more. Oh, that's right. It's more of a visual connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, into the park. Nobody's. I haven't heard anybody weigh in about this promenade extension on Concept C, with the um, green, the grass in between the two wide sides of the. the I'd say Strolling. make it a flower garden instead of. <laughs> yeah. I said I would see an extra wide walkway. Yeah, there. I think Actually, it uh, seemed like people yeah. liked the openness uh -huh. of not having the double walks, but having one wider yeah. walk maybe. Yeah. One of the things I'd like to see, Jeff, is uh, um, recommendations for walkways. Yeah. We we tried the pervious route. Um, yeah. It's not working. Permeable will be going away. Yeah. Um, what about the paper permeable paper? Well, I see that's what I'm telling. I'm wondering if, if, if in the end, do you do the walkways need to be perm? Do you have to try and make them fancy, or can you just design them so that when water sheets off, it it, it infiltrates right off on the edges? I mean, with, it, with gravel or something like that. It sounds like I mean, from what I'm hearing, all of Taylor Park has good permeability. Yeah, it does. So. I don't see a need for permeable pavement unless you have a specific, um, like a lot coverage requirement. Yeah, no. I mean, like what I would permit. advocate for are kind of civic materials that have long life. Like yeah. the pavers are going to be pavers that maybe have them clay brick or granite, so that salts and things don't, you know, eat away at them over time. Are you an advocate of the asphalt walkway idea? I am. I mean, for not for primary walks, but for like secondary, tertiary walks. Yeah, yeah they can be done really well. Drop the think grass that they just put in in um, waterfront. Waterfront. Is that Drum an option for walkways? It's yeah. Well, I mean, not for ones you have to shovel. That's um, that's more for being a, when they have concerts there. They right. drive huge so trucks. Yeah, it's for so occasional it's for use when they need right. wider. But um, it, it could work. It's just it's hard to yeah. plow. It's just right. a yeah. plow. Was that the eggshell stuff? It's yeah. either, we either do it's it as you put it in road base under the lawn, or you do like a, yeah, it's like a plastic grid that's under the lawn. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I did bring up and I want to remind you of is the, the truck, truckability. Yeah. One yeah. of the things in lining those sidewalks up, we wanted to make them truck heavy from Bishop Street down to the center and then make the center truck heavy. Yeah. Because the biggest problem we have is getting tent trucks in and out of the park. Yeah. They are very heavy and uh, and that that was one of our design aspects was trying yeah. to make those truck heavy so that we could get and no matter what event we have, whether we have a concert, a farmer's market, or whatever it is, we have a, a, a whole slew of vehicles. Yeah. So we were trying to make it, try to keep them off the grass yeah. so we don't make a mess, and, and put them on something that's not going to, it's not destructible, you know, sure. they're not going to destroy a sidewalk or whatever. That, that is an issue that we've, we've struggled with over the years in the park. And where is the best, is Church Street the best yeah. location for entering? Yeah, right out at the end of Bishop Street. That's the perfect okay. place. Yeah. It's the only place where, actually they can go up and come down Bishop and drive right into the park. They yeah. right, come right across the street easily. And we also have to back the, one of the reasons I say it, believe it or not, is we have to back the fire truck down that, that truck entry to the flagpole and then they put that ladder up in order to fix the flagpole uh -huh. because that, 
Okay. They, they need to the hoist at the top of the flagpole is 80 feet high, and the only wow. thing that can reach it is the same ladder. You know, this is the porta potty guy drive down the sidewalk yeah. and photo yeah. 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 You asked about before that central walkway connected into. I just want to say, my two cents. I like either option A or C better than B. I don't I don't like the, the central right. Walk. I don't think a larger walkway, whether it's separated by grass or it's just double width, um, I don't think that impacts the usability of that green space at all. And I think it just no, adds a nicer like promenade and um, big connection between the two ends. Yeah, yeah because they might want to set up yeah. a huge tent on top of that thing. Yeah, yeah. I think the tent is room, big yeah. enough. You know, you might want to yeah. put the tent right on the wall. The drivable grass that, does it? How how distinguishable is it from regular grass? Can you tell it's? Um, you know, like it? grass doesn't do as well on okay. it, in my experience, unless it's irrigated. Mm. Um, you know, it's going to dry out faster because it either has that plastic crate, you know, egg crate with gravel, or it has road, you know, crushed down under it. I think for the the frequency for what you're going to need vehicular access for farmers markets every week in the summer it's really going to chew up the grass i think if you have two concerts every summer you could probably get away with it yeah. the farmers market manages to load in and out without driving cars into the park okay oh, okay okay um, so it's but the band it's a consideration but the concerts and the tents mm -hmm. and it's like if you have maple fest and then you have well, yeah you yeah. saw maple fest yeah, 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 like awesome. five cars in the park yeah. So in our in our climate, what about that um, that kind of those kind of pavers that have the, the sections, the, the, the openings, yeah. and you still mow over it. The grass yeah. grows in between. Yeah, they they still tend to dry out because mm -hmm. the concrete mm -hmm. will suck the moisture out of mm -hmm. the soil. Yeah. So I made this. Um, yeah. So I just want to make sure I understand the truck access opposite Bishop down to the flagpole. Does it? need to go all the way through or no. okay no what we the hope was that we would widen that from bishop down to the center of the park and yeah. then widen the center up so the trucks could make that turn and then center themselves in the middle of what now uh, in the, on b would be the oval so what if they could the biggest problem with the tent trucks because yeah. they're so heavy and they're so big what if the truck access were diagonal so that you could get a five percent cross grade I mean, you'd use up more space, but it's actually easier to get on and off the street if you're backing into the park on an angle than leaving the park on an angle. You don't have to take a right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that cut into your... And, then, and that way the truck access could also be a pedestrian code access and not a liability. You're talking about like a diagonal... Like, like, just like off Bank Street. Like maybe off Bank Street or just maybe like take this while we just widen it, you know? challenge with widening the diagonal on the slope is yeah. the yeah. grades. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, won't you lose a bunch of parking spots there too for uh... Well, not necessarily. You would just block them off when you need to use when it. You need to. Mm. Yeah. For that half a day before Maple Fest. Or but if the stage is centered over there, that makes sense for that too because the trucks yeah. can, can unload their equipment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfect the way it is because uh, a little truck like myself can go in there on a random time without having to block any parking spots, so that's kind of yeah, because it is hatched out. Yeah. Right now. So we had um, a, s a period of time in the schedule for comments to get kind of put together. Is that still how you see? I mean, do you want to kind of get comments formally from the whole committee and? Or do you want to give us a direction now? Or? Well, what's the committee's pleasure? Should we email comments in, or do we want to have another meeting, just us, to talk things through? We've had a lot of comments right tonight already. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have. And I'm getting a sense of the committee, but... I don't think anybody remembered what we just said, though. <laughs> well, can <laughs> I... Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, yes. oh yes. no, no. <laughs> We didn't talk about bathrooms. You're also on television. At the last meeting, we decided to allow room for them, but not um, specific. But just as far as well, or as uh, an area, and we weren't 
Can we get into it? Okay. All right. I wasn't here at the last meeting. Uh, yeah, me neither. Where was that? Did you have an area planned out um, anywhere specifically? Or? Um, you know, I... There is well, one or two. There is. There is. Um, right here is oh, okay. a portal location. It could be also a bathroom location. There just wasn't mm -hmm. consensus on the direction of yeah. the bathroom. So. Good luck finding that. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, everyone knows it's needed, but it, I just somebody. have a, kind of a quick question. Yeah. I see like a, some kind of like oh, yeah. low hedges around the oval. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is that um, like here and there? Yeah. Is that kind of like a what you're getting at by that low hedge? I just was wondering. What yeah. That so is. the idea is to um, accentuate the form with planting, whether it's an informal hedge. I know we don't want formal hedges for maintenance, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. So these. Right. Corner areas would be areas where there'd be a garden. Yeah, um, up for discussion, apparently. Then. Could, some, so of, could some of the more shrubby um, perennials that are in that uphill garden now maybe yeah. be used? Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, that's, yeah, that's what I was asking. It seems like there now. hedge may be not the right yeah. answer, mm -hmm. I guess. Right. More than just but shrubby, shrubby garden-y type. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. things yeah. where you can see through. Yeah. I, when I think of a hedge, I think of a hiding spot. That's all. Yeah, well, these right. are we're yeah. thinking of very low. <laughs> very a lot low. of work. Uh, well, that's I think those would look great. I mean, not as plantings. So that actually looks like a formal hedge, but it's like a low hardscape that would define the edge and be yeah. passive seating along. Yeah, I like that it's idea. Beautiful stone. Like, so we do yeah. have yeah, we have benches yeah, yeah. in these these areas. Uh, um, yeah, the passive yeah. seating idea was very cool. Yeah, like it that, seems like a really decorative even stonework for passive seating. Yeah, yeah. Just as well. and also like there's been there's kind of two factions about children's structures where mm -hmm. a lot of people don't seem to want to see things that are specifically constructed for children, but yeah. rocks. <laughs> yeah, and passive things like that too. are yeah. that uh, for children. Just, be our child. just did it was just. Constructed last year. If you've been to downtown Middlebury lately, there's a new park where the city building used to be, um, and we put in big boulders. We put in these um, concrete spheres that are made to be bollards. So they're it's a big sphere fixed in place, and the kids hop off of them. Yeah, we'll yeah. perfect. So we can bring. We just have a photograph. We can bring some pictures of that. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love the idea of it being kind of sprinkled, like hardscape yeah. shrub collection, oh, yeah. hardscape. Yeah, yeah it's tree. interesting, like when you guys were talking about in Concept C, the end, that wall, that seating yeah. wall. Yeah. That is a really cool idea, but yeah. along the oval is, yeah. is, is a very yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 But I think really what I was hoping that we would see is some really broad, really broad concepts that we can fill in the details. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, well, yeah. that's what... You know, I, I think the oval... That's really what the master is. plan is yeah. about. Mm -hmm. is, right. yeah. Yeah. It wants to label the function and use and what you want it to do, but we're not getting into the detailed design. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, back to the idea about the comment period. We have Warren <laughs> going out to get comments from his constituencies. Yeah. Um, We've given a lot of comments right now. Yeah. I'm not so I'm not so sure we need to schedule another meeting of this group no. too. If anyone has any thoughts, mm -hmm. email them to me and then I'll get them to to um, to the consultants. Um, but also but also share it with your friends. Yeah, and I was gonna say this video is probably gonna be on the video, C1. yeah. See what the public says. I mean a lot of people don't either know about these meetings or come to them, but being able to just click on it and watch yeah. it and being able to get public input would be huge too. Mm -hmm. I think it's they don't have anything to say until it's already done. Sure. Yeah, I'll have everything to say. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, I'll ask local access to put my email on the bottom of the screen. It sounds like, as far as the committee, I'm hearing the oval is a popular direction. Yeah. And then we need to talk about some of the more specific. Jay, um, um, I also have an idea of one of the things you know where you connected those corner pieces mm -hmm. the, with the sidewalk that doesn't now run perfectly parallel to the, on yeah. the west side of the park. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did like that. Yeah, well. yeah just. Yeah. You're talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, yeah. That did have an appeal to it too. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Angie, we were talking about too, but you know, we got the instruments and play kits and you know, I'm thinking those corners in the back of the oval would be a great play area mm -hmm. for the kids. You could actually do small children's garden play areas on both sides there mm -hmm. and make that fit yeah. beautifully. Yeah. And it would be a place where people so could talking be able about to and that way if you got a concert to kids yeah, area they'll see them, but they're not distracting yeah. or anything while yeah. stuff is going on at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I've found to be like one of those like fresh concepts that we haven't really discussed. It's sort of a solution for like some people's voices have been saying, why do we need anything special for kids? What, is, what better could there be than just a big open space? And those of us with little kids saying like, are you kidding? Like the kids, you know. <laughs> but if you go to great parks, they haven't built Jungle gym equipment. Yeah. They right. right. to build rocks right. yeah. and places for kids Design to play. Design it in. That fit yeah. right into the park yeah. architecture yeah. and ideas. Yeah. And I'm thinking in those corners, you could put those instruments yeah. in a corner and yeah. have all more instruments and have yeah. that be a play corner. You yeah. could yeah. build a have nice a sandbox area in the other corner and have a kid play area. Absolutely. I mean, and you could do it on both sides of the sidewalk. I yeah. mean, it really, and that would fit perfectly into the design. I agree. I, that's what so, it needs to be. Yeah. It needs to be folded into the design, not that's right. just patched on top that's of right. something. That's yeah. what people don't, that's, yeah. it's not very appetizing for anyone. I think you'll find very little resistance when it's planned in. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess. I don't know. I still keep hearing resistance, but not in this group right the second, but... Yeah, no, I, I, I know what you're talking about. I know a lot of this earlier. People will be like, oh, more of the, it's not so bad. Like, overtly I think yeah. child's play. They say it's a play in the park right. or something. It's probably yeah. for people, but if yeah. they don't see it designated, yeah. it's friendly to every yeah. age of a child, too, and that's what becomes appealing. It's also one of the people who've had comments against a lot of kids stuff in the park and it's not because I hate kids but we have several parks in the city and almost all of them are exclusively or heavily children's activities so this is our one adult park in the city there's nothing wrong with having some kids stuff there but a good yeah. chunk of there should be adult space where I can go when I don't want to listen to kids yeah. and yeah. sit and be quiet so yeah. you need to plan that that you know, a substantial portion of the park should be designed to not be unfriendly to kids but not be friendly to them either that this is adult space and this is where I can go to be quiet how does it strike you to I think agree. of having a design feature of the park be like, yeah, kids can go climb on those rocks or not? Right. I would just, if, if I was designing it, I would, and I'll put the instruments in that, but I would put them on the south side of the oval. Yeah. And the north side of the oval, maybe have the flowers and the things that are a little quieter, and then you go quieter still into the north side. Again, you're, you're moving the more active stuff to kind of keep it on one side. I agree. With so that. that the quiet stuff can stay quiet. Well, I think the, you know, the interactive fountain is going to be a real attraction to kids. That's why yeah, it's right now on that side of the no, building. No, this in, in, in this one, it's I. That's right. There. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, this is a big park, so that's yeah. not exactly right next to the fountain. Oh, it is when you're screaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yes. But, you know, somebody brought up the idea of moving this Further back, mm -hmm. and you know maybe the the kids Splash play fountain yeah. is. That was my yeah. well, yeah. I think you have plenty of room on either side of the elite yeah. to work those kinds of things. And in fact, if you use the corners of the oval for kids, you can use that opposite side of the sidewalk to do that. You can recreate another. Well, you you've got plenty of place in there yeah. to do that and keep it. In sync with the park, and you and still have plenty of room to work all those things in. I, I, I really think if you put that performance area down there, that that's really that that's the best idea you guys have come up with, as far as I'm concerned, because I never thought of that. Uh, I, I thought because we've we've talked about a portable stage on yeah. the west side, we've done all these kind of things, trying to figure out how to take advantage of it. But that really is a unique idea that I think really would work. Yeah. And so, if we can make that decorative and mm -hmm. and and keep it in sync, and I, I really wouldn't clutter that with other things. Use that as performance space. It can be used for anything. I mean, how many concerts in the park do we have in the summer? Ten, twelve. Ten. Yeah, ten. ten. So I mean, we, we we get some pretty heavy use out of it. Yeah. To say nothing of other events that go yeah, on there. Plus, if you had a farmers market, if you had the farmers market in the oval. 
and you want to have a, a something going on while a farmer's market's going on, you can do it on the bandstand. I mean, it's the perfect yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think that really gels a lot of good ideas. Uh, and, and, and as far as the other things go, I think there's plenty of room left in the park that we could work those things in. So when should we, when, when's our next meeting to have something to react to? <laughs> react to. We, uh, have to look at so it. here's the schedule. Yeah. So, uh, so we've got that. So are you thinking, I mean, we'll obviously be getting uh, the Veterans Committee yeah. comments at some point. Mm -hmm. Did did he say when? He said soon. I'm not okay. sure. I'll um, check in with him. Because what we're going to do now is um, start putting the design into the computer. So it's rather than hand drawn it's going to be we can get more precise and sizing things and okay um so maybe early october oh yeah yeah or yeah the, early september or something like that uh early october seems early october might be good, good idea. yeah do we want to look at our calendars yeah. <laughs> there's the glow runs day. october 7th what is the glow run I don't know if that affects any of you guys. But well, I'm just saying it's Monday. We weren't going to do it on the Saturday night. Yeah, that's <laughs> That's the second week of October or third? The 10th? Yeah. That's tentatively set for the 10th right now. See how it goes. What, what is going to happen that day? <laughs> yeah, what is the next thing? So, what we'll be bringing back is kind of a scheme that combines all of the different comments and it sounds like it'll have the oval um, mm -hmm. so it's really kind of sugaring it down to a mm -hmm. final master plan so is there some information reflections or something that you can see right now you'd like to have that you don't have right now from us um like just without digesting it very much. Well, I guess, are you thinking that you'll formalize comments, or do you think you're not going to meet again to discuss the project? So... No, I, I... Are you saying you'd like the group to choose a favorite? Well, I think maybe... Um, I don't know. I think I have a pretty good sense, but... Um, it's up to you. I mean... It sounds like it's that, just with a bunch of ideas and her being yeah. the tweet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can kind of, yeah, we can kind of take a stab at it and then we'll refine things. No, I see what you're saying though, it's, um, in terms of group process, we haven't all agreed to one thing, but I haven't heard any comments that are mutually exclusive of each other, really. It sounds like we want the oval mm -hmm. as, yeah. a, as a canvas. Yeah. And then... Trees not around the fountain, just along the... And yeah, yeah and it didn't sides. seem like we wanted the trees to block Main Street. Either. Should we formalize a list of, I don't know, our favorite components of each? Or do you have that enough from the notes that you took, or is it? Um, I think one question I have is the notes, but the water, the interactive fountain um, location. Um, <laughs> that's the biggest question. Uh, yeah, I kind of feel like that's, that's still that in the bit. children's play area. I think that is, seems to divide the group a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, about whether it's just north in terms of, of location, because you know, mm -hmm. to me, I want. Yeah. A children's play structure 
or even passive seating that kids would play on that would be kind of close to, to the, the performance, the interactive water feature. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. That so, although sense. I kind of think it's nice, I mean, it, when it, a park that size, it might be a little different than Donna, but I think it's nice that there's different places where you might be with your kids mm -hmm. rather than you feel like everybody's just like, this is kid central. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of, mm -hmm. makes I, the park, I agree. it sort of makes the park. I feel like it's hard to overall, and I think like there's just I mean it's like it's a, it's never going to be all adults. It's never going to be all kids. Mm -hmm. It's going to just be different. Yeah, all the time. And if you have kids, they always older people, people and younger people. Mm -hmm. and, and they flow in and out too. It's not like at our lower home where they're going and staying for an hour at one specific spot. They might go to the play feature and be there for a while and then pass on to yeah. whatever yeah. they're moving around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it, it just seems like you want to almost not know it. Is there? Then you're gonna know this is where the kids section is. Yes. Mm -hmm. so like you're gonna stop and go. Oh, this is just fun. I like yeah. the idea of having the seating and the like the kids garden and that on the on the north side. Maybe just shifting the, the water feature over since it is so potentially noisy. Yeah, the noise part. Sure. Of the, yeah. I think that for one feature, yeah. we didn't really sure. talk specifically about the water features, but I think the ones that we were really advocating for aren't aren't like the thrilling water park kind of thing. It's like a little, couple little streams of water it's every now and then. It's coming up out of the... Yeah, the yeah, and not not even continual, continual. Yeah, right? yeah. It's just like, it's not like... And, and I mean, I, I really want to say, like, our, the community creates the culture of, at its heart. So if, like, children are... If, if, I mean, there could be, like, you know, a little movement, like, please respect the contemplative nature of this park, you know, I just feel like we can we can modify, you know, our, what our community does, like little by little. If I don't know, as a parent, I, I'm really willing to say that, like, I will tell my children to be quiet. They're not being appropriate in a certain area. But the that's the thing: is you yelling at your child right. is the loud part. That, True. Not, yeah. not to say well, that's you, but I'm just saying. This is a community filled with children. Yes. yes. And there are so many events. Yeah. The farmer's market's a community yeah. event. Yeah. The concerts are community events. Those are all, it's all, I mean, it's becoming yeah. a more family centric park. So I think that some of the elements that we put into it should reflect that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's just mean, hard to have a place to acquire. I love having those tables and the kids are going to be welcome to, to sit there and do things. Well, perhaps you could be up here or over here. I mean, Maybe. plumbing wise, too, that if you move that water feature way over, that's yeah. going to be a much mm -hmm. bigger challenge to mm -hmm. implement. Mm -hmm. um, so. I think, I mean, we had talked initially about whether the two fountains could share equipment, but I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm no, there is water service right here. Oh, I see. Because there's a line, yeah. there's a spigot here, and there's a spigot here. So there's something we can... I mean, it could be that it's it's just moved barely into the oval. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We're also talking about two and a half months of the year, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, in the winter, it's just a plaza, so... It'd be nice to put the tables and chairs over the jets and like turn them on. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dual purpose. I just don't know when it's going to change from one purpose to that. I kind of feel like we have from the notes yeah. the conversation. I feel I like so. we can take a step. I don't feel. Like, I don't think we're because we've been presented with such a wide array yeah. of options. I don't think we're feeling the imminence of it. Like yeah. like suddenly, oh my gosh, we have to. <laughs> Yeah. We have to really buckle down and make yeah. decisions now. I think, I think, and one of the things is as we start to refine it, we're going to think of new things too. So I don't want to lock in. Yeah, yeah. We're looking time. to you. I feel like the, like that's where we're looking to you guys. For yeah. First time. Yeah. We know what we want, but we don't know how we want it. So yeah. That's kind of. Well, isn't there also like hierarchy of priority of things that need to be addressed before other things that need to be addressed because of budget concerns too? Like, well, what oh, we're, but what we're laying out like is plan. kind of a, a full long build out, long, long term. Yeah. So once we get the pricing, I think that's when you would start to yeah. identify. The problems. phasing of it will depend upon what our priorities are and what yeah. we can do right. budgetarily. Yeah. But also I think there are some park maintenance needs that would be addressed by switching over to the new concepts. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like with the treescape and yeah. turf. walkways, yeah. turf, turf. Yeah. 
Are we generally looking at longest like a 15 year plan for this, what you're brainstorming on? I Is mean, it's really up to, to <laughs> I think that's <laughs> going to become more apparent when, yeah. you know, you get into the financing. And I like to have a quick five year plan and then yeah. a 10 to 15 10, 15. year. Yeah. 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 And the yeah. water jets are probably a little bit out there. <laughs> Unless yeah. there's a certain grant we can access that's... But that's also, you never know, when a guy's, somebody dies or whatever. That's also... Tom says, i got a chunk of money and I want to dedicate well, something to the department. That was... Be able to say, your money. And then something moves up in the list. On City Hall Park in Burlington, the water jet immediately got a donation from a family. So mm -hmm. people do mm -hmm. feel strongly about the kid components. Mm -hmm. How was, the, how was the city hall park down there coming on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's on the You're on camera. It's, <laughs> it's coming along. It, we had a final presentation and two that's weeks awesome. ago, and now we're, we're moving into the next phase. <laughs> there's not consensus. <laughs> I, I talked to several people that, down, who lived down there who've been involved, and boy, they were way apart on it. Yeah. They thought it ought to be. Yeah. Um, that was well, important to us. It yeah. is, and that park is like a third the size of us. So yeah. it's yeah. even more, yeah. um, you know, a and big even issue because it's smaller. Yeah. And more popular. Yeah, it's a very intensely used space. So, mm -hmm. so maybe what we can do is, you know, try and get this a little more refined and then send it back to you all and say, hey, are we missing anything that we talked about that you really want to see happen? Or if, you, if there's something that you think of between now and then, say, hey, we really want to have this. So um, you, there would be a round of comments before the meeting on the 10th? Possibly. I mean, I don't know how that would work, but it just seems yeah. like, um, it just seems like, you know, we can try and get it to a certain point, but then, yeah. you know, right. we would want to give you time to react to, you know, whatever. Well, and then even after the next meeting, you know, there's going to be another round of refinements. Right? Yeah, and I think a lot of that's going to be... Well, is the tents too far out then, or are we starting to... Well, why not, could you, no, do, I... dra could you do drawings and the committee meets and looks at the drawings and then sends them feedback and then you have a public meeting? You know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. you could have a meeting, they would email you the stuff the changes they've made, then you would have a meeting and guys and discuss your drawings or whatever, then go back, then make any tweaking, and then you have a public meeting? Um, well, we do have a public meeting. Later. Later. Yeah. yeah. But I think in order... Of course, these are also public meetings. They're yeah. noticed and everything. Oh, well, I meant, I was thinking I was at a public meeting on a committee meeting, so I was just saying yeah. that if your smaller group met and just worried about, you know, looked out any details of... Um, and you did it maybe three weeks or four weeks or whatever they mm -hmm. do the drawing, and then you could still have a, a meeting where they actually came and did the presentation. You know what I mean? Like you could have a meeting without yeah. them, but with their drawings, with their updated work. Because um, it seems like you're spot on. It just seems like, yeah, there's probably just a little more like, dialogue yeah. that has to happen. But otherwise, I, I'm really satisfied with this meeting, but I know that there are some voices who aren't here mm -hmm. that, I mean, in, in fact, might, might not even share my satisfaction mm -hmm. with what we've been talking about. So I don't know. The only reason I would think that it would be useful to really have that second kind of meeting is if a greater portion of the original um, like stakeholders wanted to and were able to come to it or comment on it by email. And this would be separate from the meeting on the 10th of October? Yeah. Could be earlier? Yeah. Depending on when they could turn around the Yeah, yeah. yeah. depending yeah, on everybody's schedule. But if, but if it's just the same group, I, I don't really see why we need to do it again. There were 14 of us here today. Mm -hmm. There were um, probably three to four folks missing from the original group. Oh, so we're not too far off. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like I said, I spoke with Joni, and she didn't have any specific concerns about the plans themselves. Just in her mind, was just what this cost, which we haven't really got to yet. So, yeah, this one person. <laughs> but she expressed the same thing. Anyway. <laughs> I think we just stick with the tent. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Sounds good.
That's good. But keep the ideas coming. We can always. Yeah, yeah, email, please can, do. Thank you for all of your thorough comments. Yeah. <laughs> really, I mean, it's really, it's really helpful. Sometimes you meet with people and they're just like, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. That's not very useful. Oh, you guys have a lot of really, really constructive yeah. feedback. I, I'll give you a case in point. And Chip can tell you about this when we tried to pick a, a, a logo for the city. Oh, yeah. It took us a year. Yeah. We started with 50 designs. Yeah. We kept whittling it down and whittling it down and whittling it down. And we finally got down to it. We picked one that nobody liked but was everybody's second choice. And we decided, okay, that's it. We sent it to the city council, and they nobody liked it. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> and the city council said, that's awful. Go back to the drawing boards. And we said, no, we're not going back to the drawing boards. It took how many people do we have in that committee? Ten? Eight or ten? Sure, yeah. Sure, yeah. That pretty big. Awesome. Yeah. And, and we pulled our hair out trying to figure out how to get a logo. The logo you see on the trucks is the one we picked out, and they all like it now. <laughs> Right. Was that? Was, I guess that was in the top five. Oh, it looks like a. Uh, I'll tell you there. what we went through. Just, just trying to pick a font. <laughs> it looks like an old. It looks like an old name. We feel like voting on the minutes, or should we just do that next time? I vote on the minutes. They look good to me. All right. Yeah. Minutes look great. Good. All right.